Hey guys, it is Julie here with JT Wealth. In today's video, we are discussing four common mistakes that investors make during an election period. So let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back and thank you so much for being here. As you probably know, we are approaching a presidential election here in the United States. And with those uncertain times also comes uncertain markets. So today I want to highlight a few common mistakes that investors make during a time like this and why they might not be the right choice. If we take a look at the historic average returns of the S&P 500, during election and non-election years, looking back from 1932 up to 2019, we can see that election year average returns came in at 5.8%, whereas non-election years came in a good bit higher at 9.6%. And of course, 2020 is not just any election year. We have a very special year as 2020, we have been navigating a global pandemic, including shutdowns that have really been affecting the economy. And of course, the ever changing status of the next stimulus package. Now this stimulus package seems to be moving the market more and more lately than anything else the businesses are reporting. So the four common mistakes that investors make during a time like this are panic selling their investments, waiting until after the election is done to invest, only focusing on short term volatility and changing their investment strategy based on election predictions. So as we go through these four mistakes and why they often aren't the best choices for your investments, keep in mind that these don't only apply during a presidential election. They can be applied to any type of market volatility that we see year over year. And just before we dive into those four topics, this is just your friendly reminder to please make sure you're subscribed to the channel, it really helps us grow and helps you stay up to date with all of our latest videos. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to check out some of the great links we have down below in the description. This includes a link to my Patreon page, which allows you to join our Discord chat group. And Weeble also has some great referrals on right now for opening a new investment account where you get three free stocks just for opening your account and making your initial funding. Okay, so on to mistake number one and that is panic selling your investments and cashing out of the stock market. Now, as election day approaches, investors can get nervous, so they will completely cash out their investment positions as a way to try and limit their losses. And historically, inflows to money market funds, which invest in extremely low risk short term debts, have risen threefold during election years. But money market funds deliver interest that is on par with a high yield savings account. And with record low interest rates nowadays, that's hardly anything. And in addition to this, timing the market is nearly impossible. For this strategy to actually work out well, you would have to be able to predict the exact right time to get out of the market before it started taking a downturn. On top of that, you would have to also perfectly time when to move your funds from cash or money market back into the stock market to try and capture that gains on the upside. As I've said before, time in the market is way more important than timing the market. And historically, the stock market has rewarded those who have stayed invested in a diversified portfolio over the long term. Now, the second common mistake that many investors make is pressing pause on your investing and waiting until after the election to invest your money. So if you haven't sold all of your investments, you might just be tempted to put a pause on any of your investing instead. When the market is volatile, it is our human nature to try and want to limit our exposure to that risk. But like I just said, timing the market is rarely a winning game. By holding off on investing until you see the market stabilize, you could be missing out on some potential gains as market downturns can be the best time to invest. You're gonna get really quality stocks at a bargain price. And Capital Group did a hypothetical case study taking a look at three different investment approaches over the last 22 election cycles. 
The three that they looked at were being fully invested in equities, making monthly contributions to equities, or staying in cash until after the election. They then calculated the portfolio returns after each cycle, assuming a four-year holding period. The hypothetical investor who stayed in cash until after the election had the worst outcome of the three portfolios in 16 of the 22 periods. Meanwhile, investors who were fully invested or made monthly contributions during election years came out on top. These investors had higher average portfolio balances over the full period and more often outpaced the investor who stayed on the sidelines longer. And this brings us nicely right to our third common mistake, which is focusing on short-term volatility and not investing for the long term. Now, market volatility isn't just in the October leading up to the election, but also in the November and December following. And the best thing you can do is ignore it. The key to surviving any downturn is to focus on long-term investments, as short-term volatility rarely has any effect on long-term outcome. So avoid that urge to sell just because things are getting a little bumpy. If you're focused on the long-term investments, it shouldn't matter what happens in the next month, year, or even four years. Regardless of what is going on in the world, the stock market has always been able to bounce back. Even after the market experienced one of its worst quarters in history earlier this year at the start of this whole pandemic, it then saw record highs just months later. In fact, the S&P 500 is currently up nearly 7% since the beginning of the year, despite falling roughly 30% in March. And now the fourth common mistake that I would like to chat about is changing your investment strategy based on election outcome predictions. Investors can run into trouble when they place too much importance on the effects of who wins the election on the stock market. Historically speaking, the results of the US election have essentially made no difference when it comes to long-term investment returns. Capital Group economist Daryl Spence said that presidents get far too much credit and far too much blame for the health of the U.S. economy and the state of financial markets. There are many other variables that determine economic growth and market returns, and frankly, presidents have very little influence over them. What should matter more to investors is staying invested. And although past results are not predictive of future returns, a US $1,000 investment in the S&P 500 back when Franklin Roosevelt took office would be worth over $14 million today. During this time, there have been exactly seven Democratic and seven Republican presidents. So the election results should not affect your long-term investing strategies. And don't let the worry of some short-term chaos as you can see on this chart, stocks have trended higher regardless of which party has been in office. And of course, you can see lots of dips there, especially right after election periods, but you also see them recover. And that's just what the stock market does. If this was just a straight line, we would be looking at a savings account at half a percent. So as I said before, I think that these points all remain valid, not just during an election year, but during any market volatility. It is our human nature to want to avoid risk and loss there, and we know that we feel losses twice as hard as we feel gains. But just try to not lose sight of why you are making your investment choices in the first place, and always keep those long-term goals in mind. As always, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this topic. How have you been handling the market volatility lately, and what is your investment strategy? Leave it down below in the comments, please. And of course, if you made it all the way to the end of the video here, please consider giving us a big thumbs up and make sure that you're also subscribed to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and cheers.